Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube? BK Brad Kellner. Today is Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. We're talking Texas basketball on today's video, recapping Texas's loss in Lubbock last night. The Longhorns falling to Texas Tech 77 to 64 in Chris Beard's return to the South Plains. We'll recap the game itself talk about what it means for the future of Texas basketball and just kind of do a state of the Texas program discussion during today's video. So please like this video if you can, and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet. Really do appreciate the continued love and support. We talk all things Texas Longhorns on this channel, Texas basketball, Texas football, Texas baseball, any of the happenings surrounding the 40 acres. We talk about it here on this channel. Also, if you are a Houston sports fan, we talk some Houston sports here as well. But we're focusing on the Longhorns. We're focusing on the Longhorns men's basketball team in today's video. And once again, Texas coming up short last night in Lubbock, 77 to 64, the final. And Texas Tech was in control. First of all, I'll give some love to Texas Tech fans. That was a tremendous atmosphere last night. One of the best environments that I've ever seen in a college basketball game. Uh, look, Tech fans have had this date marked on their calendar for a long, long time. I mean, ever since Chris Beard took the job in Austin 10 months ago, you know, Tech fans were excited about his return. They've been ready for this one, and they showed up and showed out last night. Uh, all sorts of pictures and videos of them camping out days in advance for this one. I knew Tech fans would show up. Uh, that's a passionate fan base, and they've really bought into basketball over the last couple of years, thanks in large part to Chris Beard. But, uh, man, they showed up. And, look, I, I knew it would be a full house last night. I was worried about stuff being thrown onto the court. I was worried about fans rushing the court. I was worried about something crazy happening during the game last night. And we really didn't see that. I mean, at the very end of the game, there were a few things thrown on the court, which I thought was weird because Tech won. Like, okay, if Texas won or if there was a controversial call that went against Texas Tech, then maybe I understand stuff being thrown on the court. But, uh, there was some of that going on at the end, but really that was it. I mean, it was, uh, it was a loud, passionate crowd last night in Lubbock. And look, that's what college sports are all about. Rivalries are great. Uh, that's what makes college sports special. And Texas Tech hates Texas. They've always hated Texas and they hate Texas even more now that Texas took their basketball coach. And, uh, once again, they showed up and showed out last night. So, a tremendous atmosphere, and look, the atmosphere definitely played a part in last night's game. I think Texas Tech is the better team right now than Texas, but I definitely think the environment had something to do with Texas's struggles, especially early on. I mean, Texas Tech got out to a big lead. They pushed it to 12 early last night. The Longhorns did come back. They cut it to three, a little past the midway point in the first half, but then Texas Tech uh, was able to take control once again and ended up taking a 14-point lead into the locker room. You know, in the second half, Texas fought. Uh, they were able to get some stops defensively. They cut it to six at one point, but that's as close as it ever gotten. You know, really, there, was, uh, there wasn't a point in the second half where you felt like Texas was going to win the game. It got interesting at six. You could sense some nervousness in the crowd, but, man, on the following possession after the Longhorns cut it to six, uh, Kevin O'Banner hit a crazy three in the corner that bounced up and bounced in, got a nice shooter's touch. And Tech pushed it back up to nine, and it was double digits shortly thereafter. So Tech was in control for most of the game, and uh, there weren't too many moments last night where it felt like Texas had any legitimate shot to win the game. Uh, and look, this wasn't quite Gonzaga in terms of beatdown, but Texas was clearly flustered by the environment at, at the kennel a couple of months ago when the Longhorns went up to Spokane to take on Gonzaga. And Gonzaga got out to that huge lead, and Texas never really could come back and make it a game. It wasn't quite that level of beatdown, but uh, it was clear Texas was a little flustered and overwhelmed by the craziness of the atmosphere at the United Supermarkets Arena last night. Bad turnovers, defensive lapses. For me, defense is the reason why Texas lost this game. I mean, you can criticize the offense, and look, Texas has struggled offensively at times this season. Last night was no exception, but when Chris Beard teams aren't known for their offense. Texas Tech fans will tell you that. Uh, Chris Beard teams are known for tenacious defense, and – you didn't get that in the first 20 minutes last night, right? The Longhorns give up 54 and a half points per game this season. Well, they gave up 43 in the first half last night and tech shot well over 50% in the first 20 minutes last night. So uh, defensive lapses, look, tech was hitting some good shots, some tough shots, I should say, but a lot of way too open looks that Texas tech got in the first half. 
and the Longhorns were able to tighten things up defensively in the second half, but it felt too little too late. So defensive lapse is uh, definitely an issue for Texas, and that was a big part of the reason why Tech built that big lead in the first half, and they were able to kind of control the game throughout. Uh, some other thoughts on the game, once again, before we shift to a state of the program and kind of looking ahead at the rest of the season for the Longhorns. My biggest Chris Beard gripe last night was, well, I've got two. Avery Benson did make a lot of sense, and Tech fans enjoyed getting to boo the hell out of Avery Benson, and they enjoyed him bricking that three and the one shot that he took. Avery Benson hasn't played for this team in a long time, and uh, Chris Beard was looking for answers. He was looking for a spark. Maybe he thought the guy who played at Texas Tech, the guy who knows that atmosphere, knows that gym, maybe he thought he could provide something uh, that obviously just didn't happen. So I, I didn't get that decision, and clearly that didn't work. But also Chris Beard just didn't use his timeouts in the first half. Like when Texas Tech was going on those runs and extending the lead to double figures, Chris Beard should have taken a timeout. I, I didn't think he used his first timeout until like under four or five minutes to go in the half. Uh, you got to try to stop the momentum. You got to try to take the crowd out of the game for at least a little bit. Like the tech crowd was crazy. As soon as the game started again, they were going to make some noise and hell, they were pretty loud during the timeouts as well, but you got to do something to try to stop the momentum uh, on the floor. And Chris Beard didn't do that. I didn't quite get that bit. Like Bill self at times will use all four of his timeouts in the first half during a road game when his team is struggling. Like, that might be overkill. You want to have some timeouts in the second half, but like some coaches out there will do whatever they possibly can to stymie uh, the opposing crowd and stop the momentum. Uh, Chris Beard didn't do that at all. So I don't know if it would have made much of a difference in the game itself, but uh, I prefer my coaches trying to do something to turn the tide a little bit instead of just waiting for those TV timeouts every four minutes. Maybe that could have changed something for the Longhorns last night. Uh, but, uh, yeah, once again, I don't know how much of a difference it would have made. So that's my biggest Chris Beard gripe from, uh, from last night. Look, tech is just the better team right now. They are, uh, they're ranked ahead of Texas for a reason. Honestly, they're ranked number 14 in the country. I don't think there are 13 basketball teams better than Texas tech right now. Uh, they've got a lot of quality wins under their belt. They haven't lost at home. They've got to get better on the road. That's their issue as does Texas. Uh, but Texas Tech's a, a good basketball team, and they're better than Texas right now. It's as simple as that, and we saw that on full display last night. So uh, the Longhorns will get another chance at Texas Tech in Austin in a couple of weeks. Uh, there will be a lot of Tech fans at the Irwin Center, but it, it won't be like last night. Obviously, uh, it, it might feel more like a tournament game when Texas Tech comes to Austin to where it's like a, a split crowd. I wouldn't be surprised at all if there are more Tech fans. Matter of fact, I think there will be more Tech fans than uh, UT fans in Austin in a couple of weeks, but it won't be like 98% Tech fans like it was last night at the USA. So Texas gets another shot at Texas Tech uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll see what the Longhorns do, but uh, congrats to Tech on winning their Super Bowl, man. That was their biggest game of the season, one of their biggest games in school history. So they hate Chris Beard. You know, part of me is like, why? because Chris Beard is far and away the most successful basketball coach you've ever had, and you didn't have any basketball history before Chris Beard got there. Uh, so it's weird to just dunk on the dude who brought you all that success, who got you the new practice facility, who's the reason you're a relevant basketball program. Then on the other hand, you know, he left for the rival. And I hear Tech fans say all the time, it's not that he left, it's how he left. I, I, I find that BS. Like, that's not how it works. It's definitely that he left. There's no good way to break the heart of loyalists. And if you leave at all, they're going to be met, especially when you leave for Texas, right? If Chris Beard would have left to take a job at North Carolina or Kansas or Virginia, I don't know, just a, a random good school that would have been a step up from Texas Tech, then maybe the animosity wouldn't be there. But the Texas thing, I mean, it, you, like you leave in general, people get pissed. You leave for your biggest rival, people are going to get pissed. I don't think it's how he left. I don't think it's not having the meeting with Kirby Hokut or any of the other rumors or stories that you hear. Uh, when you leave, when you're beloved and you leave, people are going to get pissed. That goes for coaches, that goes for players, whatever. So on one hand, it's a little weird to me, but on the other hand, I get it. The guy left for the biggest rival, and uh, there you go. But Tech seems to be in good hands right now with, uh, with Mark Adams. So... Texas loses. Let's go to the overall state of the program. I will say this. It's just one game for Texas. 
Uh, obviously, that's a game Texas wanted to win. You want to win them all, but that one, you want to win for your coach. I really wanted to win that as a fan to shut some Texas Tech people up. That would have been pretty awesome for the Longhorns to go into their house and beat them during their Super Bowl. But in the grand scheme of things, it's just one loss in the standings, and the schedule is still very tough for Texas moving forward. They're two games in to this five-game stretch against ranked teams. They're one and one. They got the win over Tennessee over the weekend. And coming up next, you've got three more tough games. Iowa State coming to town this weekend. Iowa State has not been very good in conference play. They were great in the non-con, but they have fallen on some hard times in Big 12 play. They lost to Kansas last night at home. You know, Kansas is really good. They're first place in this league right now. But Kansas was without their best player and the All-American Ochai Abaji like that. If Iowa State was a legit contender or going to be a legit contender in the Big 12 at the end of the year, that's a game that they win, but they don't. And now they're three and six in conference play. So they were great once again in the non con. I think they were 13 and 0 going into Big 12 play this year. Uh, since then, it hasn't worked out for the Cyclones. So of the next three, far and away the most winnable game for Texas because Kansas is a top 10 team. Once again, they're first place in the league. And then at Baylor, Baylor's a top 10 team. They're right behind Kansas right now. Uh, Baylor is legit. We all know that. So you would like to somehow get two of these next three if you're Texas, uh, but you got to at least get one. And Iowa State feels like the most winnable game the Longhorns have over these next three. And I think Texas will be favored against Iowa State when the Cyclones come to town. I know Texas lost at Iowa State earlier this year, but Iowa State's not the same team. And once again, the game is in your house. So uh, for Texas, they got to put Texas Tech behind them. Even if they won that game last night, like still just one game, you got to put it behind them because you have a, a ton of tough games coming up, not just over the next three, but for the rest of the season. So grand scheme of things. Yeah. One loss for the Longhorns, one that you would have liked to have won for sure, but you got to put it behind you and move on get ready for Iowa State and Kansas and Baylor and the rest of this slate. So Texas will be fine, guys. Look, Tech is really good. Once again, I'll give them their props. I'll give them their love. That's a good basketball team right now in Lubbock. Uh, they haven't lost at home all season. Like Texas is not the first team to struggle at the United Supermarkets Arena this season, and they won't be the last either. Uh, but Texas will be fine. Look, are they a Final Four team like some hoped going into the season? No, uh, but I still think this is a tournament team. Uh, they've got some flaws, clearly. They've got some deficiencies on the roster, and we saw that last night, and we've seen that in some of the losses that the Longhorns have suffered this season. They don't have a true rim protector, and that back line of defense that is so important that they had with Jericho Sims and Kai Jones last year. They don't have a true, true point guard. Marcus Carr's done a good job. I thought he was good last night, uh, but like they don't have a true point guard. Devin Askew is is the closest thing they have to that. He's got some limitations right now. A guy who should be a freshman. I know he's technically in his second year of college ball, but he reclassified a year early. So still 18 and to be a true fresh playing point guard in this conference, not easy. So that's something that Texas doesn't have right now that I wish they have. And they're just not super athletic guys. Uh, it's simple as that. Like tech, looked bigger and stronger and faster than Texas last night. Texas just doesn't have the athletes that some of the better teams in college basketball have. So there are some roster deficiencies. There are some flaws uh, with this Texas roster, but like I still think this is a good team and I still think this is a tournament team. And with Chris Beard and his success in March, I think there's a chance Texas can do something in the NCAA tournament. Some just flew right in front of my face. Sorry. That was why I did the random little backhand with the right hand. Uh, but yeah, this is not a final four team this year, but that doesn't mean you should give up on Chris Beard. I know what Chris Beard said at his introductory press conference and he raised the bar super high and Texas fans had lofty expectations, especially after all of the transfer additions in the off season. But you know, Texas didn't hire Chris Beard for one year and you should not close the book on a coach midway through year one. It's still a pretty good Texas basketball team that's 16 and six. Uh, they're in the top half of the big 12 standings and they're still in the tournament right now. Like they're not bad this year. And once again, you should never close the book on a coach after one year, regardless of how they're bad, uh, of how they're doing. But I saw some of the comments last night on Twitter and watching my guy fanatic perspective. He did a YouTube live hit. Make sure y'all subscribe to him. If you haven't done that yet, people were saying that Chris Beard sucks. They were saying that Chaka smarts better. They were saying that Chris Beard is Tom Herman 2.0. It's like, goodness gracious, y'all. I, I love that there's passion in Texas basketball now because it just, it, it hasn't been there. But uh, to me, it's absolutely insane that a lot of fans who were 
perfectly fine with Shaka Smart winning zero tournament games in six years are now like criticizing Chris Beard for I don't even know what they're criticizing Chris Beard for. They lost on the road to a top 15 team. Like uh, people are done with Chris Beard because of that. That's crazy to me. So uh, don't close the book on Chris Beard. Number one, this team is fine this year. I think they will be fine. And number two, it's year one. And Chris Beard has taken over for a program that's been in a dormant state for the last 10 years. Let's be honest. Like Mark Adams is a hell of a coach and tech fans are are happy with him, obviously. Um, But it is, and I know Mark Adams has got a lot of transfers this year like Chris Beard did, but it is a little easier to take over a program that's been really successful over the last few years that already has their renovations done, new practice facility. All of that stuff is already done and taken care of. A little easier to walk into that situation than to walk into the situation that Chris Beard is walking into, where once again, this program has been dormant for the last few years. So he wasn't hired for one year. I think Texas will be fine this year. I think in the long run, you guys are going to like Chris Beard. I'll eat my words if I'm wrong. I've been a fan of his for a long time. Uh, I think he's a great coach, and I think he will be a great coach at the University of Texas. feels ridiculous that I even have to say that, but with some of the comments and posts I've seen over the last 12, 18 hours, uh, hell, really, every time Texas loses a game, we've seen him this year, I feel like I had to make that statement. So uh, congrats to Texas Tech. They win their biggest game of the year, one of the biggest games in school history. They were better last night. The atmosphere was awesome. It was electric. They were the better basketball team, and they are the better basketball team right now. So credit where credit is due. Uh, But Texas will be fine. The Longhorns have to put this behind them. Got to get ready for Iowa State. Got to get ready for the rest of conference play. Texas's goal was not to win a game in Lubbock this year. Their goal was to make some noise in the conference and hopefully have some success in March too. Uh, Those things are still very much on the table. So. That's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate the love. Please like this video if you haven't yet. Please uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And comment below with your thoughts. Uh, Where are you with Texas basketball right now? Your thoughts on the game last night. Texas just didn't have it. They didn't get enough from some important pieces. Uh, Timmy Allen, I I, I probably could have brought him up earlier, but he was a no-show. You can't have your leading scorer not show up in an environment like that. Marcus Carr, I thought, played pretty well. Courtney Ramey was great in the first half, put up a goose egg in the second half. Uh, Devin Askew did some good things, but he's got some limitations clearly right now. But yeah, no Timmy Allen. Andrew Jones didn't give you anything. One of seven, four fouls. Excuse me, one of seven, four points in just 18 minutes last night. Texas just didn't get enough from some important players, and you're not going to beat good teams in their house when that happens. So uh, there you go. Final thoughts on the game, but I want to hear from you all too. Comment below your thoughts, your questions. Uh, whatever's on your mind regarding Texas Longhorn basketball, but the Longhorns will be fine. So Texas and Iowa State coming up this weekend. We might do a preview video a little bit later in the week. Thank you all for watching. Shout out to our sponsor, Last Stand Hats. You've seen the discount code scrolling across the bottom of your screen. Use BK10 at checkout. You'll get 10% off your purchase of any Last Stand hat. Thank you all again for watching. Until next time, y'all stay safe. Y'all stay healthy. And hook them.